Hi everyone, welcome to Quilting from the Very Beginning with me, Lindsay B. This is Level 1, Segment 1 of our quilting tutorial series that will take you from a very, very beginning quilter all the way up to an advanced, confident quilter. This is our very first video. Very excited about this. So this video, being our first, we're going to talk about what our takeaway, what I'm hoping you guys will get out of it. So our takeaways. First, we're going to do an overview of quilting from the very beginning. We're going to talk about basic tools you need to make a basic quilt. And then we're going to talk about the quilt we're going to make and the fabric requirements and everything else uh, for our level one quilts. So when I decided to do this tutorial um, series, I literally wanted to take it from the very beginning. The word very was very critical to me at that point. I wanted it to be a quilting tutorial where if you only knew that a quilt was a piece of fabric with some batting, more fabric on the top, sewn together to make a blanket, that you would be successful at being able to make a quilt. The, along with these videos, we do also have our written tutorials, which you can find. Uh, most likely we're going to put those in the um, Facebook group on quilting from the beginning. I may move that at some point, but for now that's where you can find them. For those of you who are more advanced quilters or have great suggestions, we would love to see your comments, all of your questions, everything in the comments here on YouTube, and then also, of course, on Quilting from the Beginning Facebook group. All right, so let's talk uh, each, ah, sorry, I'm trying to do this in one take. So part of the tutorial will be, each part of the tutorial will be broken down into levels. Each level will represent a finished quilt. And I mean from start to finish, from which how it's going to look in the beginning all the way to the binding quilting at the end. So in each of these levels are going to be built, broken down into segments that will have skills to build on as we go from level to level to level so that you can become a very confident with your basic skills before you move on to the more moderate things. So you're gonna need some basic tools. I am gonna go into this, assuming that most of you are going to be doing this with a sewing machine um, and that you know how to use it if you're using that. I have got some feedback from the group on Facebook that some of you would like to do it by hand or maybe don't have a sewing machine or this is just what's gonna work well for you. That is totally fine. These tutorials are kind of going to be geared around the sewing machine, but I will make sure to include uh, how I would approach it with a hand sewing technique along with it. So you're going to need some needles and some good quality thread. Oh, and when I'm doing these, this I'm just going to show you what I use. These can also be found in the albums section of the Quilting from the Beginning Facebook page. If others of you use a different brand or have different thoughts, please just leave comments there on the album or here on this YouTube video uh, to share what you like, because there are so many different ones of everything. So I use Guterman thread for both my uh, top thread and my bobbin. You're gonna need a pair of scissors, sewing scissors that are used only for sewing. These are the ones I love, these are my gingers. Now most, uh, these are these are size seven inch shears. Most people would do really well with an eight inch shear. I just happen to have really small hands. All right, you're also going to need, hold on, I lost my spot here. I don't wanna miss anything because then that would be bad. I want you to have everything you need here. Okay, needles, thread. Oh, I didn't say thimble along with the needle if you're gonna be doing hand sewing. You're gonna need a thimble. I can't find my thimble, shocking. It's a metal thimble that I use. There are other kinds, but I do use a metal one because that's what I grew up using with my mother and grandmother quilting with them. So we also are gonna want a marking pencil. Just a regular pencil will do. You can use a melting, uh, melting, a quilting marking pencil such as this if you want to. But for what we're doing, for the purposes of this quilt, 
a pencil will be just fine. No need to buy anything fancy. You're also going to need, no matter what, you're going to need a seam ripper. This is the one I use. It is a Dritz. I have a package of it. Where did it go? It's a Dritz brand seam ripper. And it is designed to be more comfortable in the hand. I do have a spare, but like, I mean, I'm just telling you right now, I can't even find where my other one went. I lose seam rippers all the time. I cannot keep track of seam rippers to save my life. I used to buy the little blue ones. They're a little bit less expensive. And I would lose them and lose them and lose them. I mean, I would buy six at a time and I would still lose them all. I swear, my entire children's inheritance has gone to uh, little blue seam rippers. So one day I was in an emergency situation. I didn't have my seam ripper. I went to the fabric store. This is the only one that they had. This was several months ago and I haven't lost this one yet. So fingers crossed, knock on wood, that I can hold on to this one. It's very comfortable, easier to use than the blue ones, in my opinion. I also um, highly recommend getting some sewing gloves. Just to, These are compression gloves to keep your hands from getting sore after sewing, and they can do things like preventing carpal tunnel. Get these on Amazon or at a sewing store, nothing too fancy. I hope that you will take me seriously and try and use these. I did not have these when I started quilting, and now I do have carpal tunnel issues, and you will see um, the braces that I wear as we sew. So try to prevent that with the gloves. A lot of people use a rotary cutter, which is totally fine. If you have a rotary cutter, you will love it, and you know how to use it, you should use it for this quilt. But we are gonna go over a basic cutting technique in a future video about how to use just scissors to make um, the cuts that you need for this quilt for your basic cutting. And on that note, we also need to have, if you're not going, if you're going to be using not a rotary cutter and you're going to be learning this new technique, you will need a four by six card and a three by five card. And that will be in just a couple of videos when we talk about cutting. So hopefully I didn't forget anything. Oh, I did forget. Ha ha. You also need an ironing board or mat. This is my woolen mat. It's very well used, stained, everything else. I love this, but any mat or sewing will do, or ironing mat will do. And then this is the iron I use. It's a Black & Decker from Walmart. Cost me 10 bucks and I love it. I also do use, it does have a steam function, but I prefer to use a um, misting spray bottle. Just gives me better steam, but you, this is totally optional. You just do need an iron of some kind, however. Whoops, there it goes. All right, so those are our basic tools that we need. So now let's talk about the quilt that we're going to make. Hooray, hooray. So we are going to be making, for this quilt, drum roll please, a four patch. This is a four patch block. And we're going to be making a series of these blocks, sewing them together to put into one quilt. But let's back up. This is a square. In this case, it is a five inch by five inch square. Squares can be much more complicated. They can have triangles, they can be striped, they can have decorative things going on within them. All sorts of ways to cut a, a square apart or excuse me, cutting fabric apart and sewing it back together into a square. So when we say square, it might mean a five inch by five inch type of square, just a square, but it also, as we move along, as we learn our piecing, it will be with whatever is in that piecing in that square. Because then we take these squares and we sew them together, usually in fours, to make a block. And these blocks, are then repeated. Maybe we have other blocks to go with them. They're sewn together and that will make your quilt top. Now we're gonna talk a lot about, um, well, let's talk about how much you need of each. Let's talk about the specs of the quilt. Hold on just a second here. Get my thoughts organized just a titch so I don't miss anything. Okay. For our four patch, I have decided to make a throw. 
throw size, okay? I have some springy throws that I use uh, just for around the television or whatever. I live in the Pacific Northwest, so it can get really chilly even in the spring and sometimes even in the early summer. Not this year, but let's keep going. But I do want something for those damp and chilly afternoons. So I've decided that I'm going to use like a campy, outdoorsy, dark and deep, rich colored squares for my quilt. And we'll talk more about how to select what you wanna use for your quilt later. I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what I will be using. So if I'm gonna make a throw size quilt, I'm gonna need, well, the finished size of that will be, oh, let me make sure I do this every time. 54 inches, you'd think I could remember this, by 63 inches. When we give the dimensions of a finished quilt, what we mean is the first number this is usually the width, and that is 54 inches wide. And then it's gonna be 63 inches long. And then in here, you're going to have your blocks. So each of these squares represent a block, okay? So 54 inches wide, 63 inches long. If you are going to make a throw size, eraser is eraser, where did it go? All right, you eraser. Then you will need to achieve a 54 by 63 inch quilt, you will need 196 squares five inch squares, okay? If this, if you'd rather, you can make a lap size. And this will be a little bit smaller, but I'll give you all of what you need to make this one as well. This is great if you wanna make something for your grandchild or, or a little kiddo, or if you just want something for your lap, just a small little blanket. It's a nice size project to start with. If you're very new to quilting, it's a little bit more manageable. Our lap size is gonna be 36 inches by 54 inches. So a little bit skinny, but it'll work out great for uh, what we're doing here. To make a lap size quilt, you're gonna need 96 five inch squares. So we're gonna be using the same size of squares. We're just gonna be using less for a lap size and then more for the throw size. Now, I usually don't buy my backing along with my um, front. I usually wait till the end. I, I don't know if it's just because I want to see how it looks at the end or I don't want to think about the back when I'm buying my fabric. But normally what I will do is um, buy the backing at the end. For our backing, though, I will give you this in case you're one who likes to plan ahead. Boop. Okay, for our throw size, if you want to use standard backing, just two pieces of, it would just be two pieces of fabric sewn together, one color, fun and done. You will need a piece of fabric that, or excuse me, you will need two yards of 45 wide. We will talk about this later to cover your quilt. If you're making a lap size, there's a few different ways to get there, but for general purposes on a 45 wide, you will need one and three quarters yard. You could ignore all of this and we will talk more about that as we get into the quilt. Including the 45 wide, which some of you who are advanced quilters, you know, you know that that's a little bit tricky of a concept. We're also gonna give you the option, and this is the one I'm gonna take of doing a bonus quilt. I will show you how to do both backings, but bonus quilt. A bonus quilt is a backing that has something interesting or fun or neat about it so that you have something fun on both sides of the quilt. So you have your four patch on the top and then a bonus quilt on the back. So for our bonus quilt, we're going to be doing what's called a jelly roll race. Now I told you a minute ago that I usually don't buy my backing with my fabric but this time I did because <laughs> I was at the fabric store. I knew this is what I wanted to make with, I had these charm packs at home, these uh, five inch squares at home and I wanted to, and then I saw these and so I saw a jelly roll. So first of all, a jelly roll is, a, this is a jelly roll. <laughs> it's got two and a half inch strips. There's 40 of them in a standard roll and they go around 
it's all pre-cut and ready to go for you. And I just thought this one is made of quilters flannel, high quality flannel that I thought would just look great with my, and I saw it on sale. So I'm like, I'm going to grab that. And since it's flannel, it's going to be nice and cozy on the back. I think it's going to work out great. If you want to make a jelly roll, roll race bonus quilt for the throw size, you are going to need 56 two and a half inch strips. We will talk about how to get there in the upcoming videos. The jelly roll is obviously one way to get those two and a half inch strips. For a lap size, you just need one jelly roll, which is 40 two and a half inch strips. All right, so that covers the back. Batting, we're gonna get into the batting in more detail. But if you have a batting you wanna use or you wanna just purchase something standard, maybe a cotton batting, a warm and natural kind of batting, then for the throw size, you're gonna to need to have at least 60 by 70 inches of batting. For the lap, you are going to want, oh shoot, where did it go? This is not hard math, but I had it written down. You want to have about 42 inches by 60 inches. And this is just going to give you some wiggle room when you put the quilt together. And we will get to that, I absolutely promise. Binding, normally we buy our binding at the end as well. But on this quilt, we are going to do a cheap binding. So we are not going to need any extra fabric, any additional fabric for our binding. All right, so let's just go over quickly the specs all together of what you're going to need for this quilt for a throw. A throw size being 54 inches by 63 inches, you will need 196 squares. And then that is, of course, five inches. You're going to need batting. 60 by 70 inches, about, about 60 by 70. For the back, you will need two yards of 45 wide fabric, which we'll talk about later, or you're going to need 56 jelly roll strips, which are two and a half inch strips, uh, to make the bonus quilt. Okay. This will all be in the written tutorial as well in a very easy to read format for you guys. If you decided to make a lap quilt, your finished size will be 36 inches by 54 inches. You will need 96 five inch squares for batting. You will need about 42 by, uh, what do they say, 60. And, and this is all approximately. Binding, we don't need anything. Oh yeah, back. The backing, you need one and three fourths yard of a 45 wide, or one jelly roll for the bonus quilts, which is 40 two and one half inch strips. All right, you guys, hopefully you didn't get too overwhelmed or too underwhelmed with this video. The next couple of videos, we'll talk about fabric selection, uh, how different ways to purchase fabric. And then we'll also show you a very basic way of cutting fabric. If all you have is a pair of scissors, I will show you how to do that uh, to make your five inch squares. So until then, happy quilting, and I'll see you guys on the Facebook group.